Welcome to a solo game playthrough from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today, as you can see from the board, and here's the box, I'm going to do a playthrough of Stilico, Last of the Romans. This is a solitaire-only game from Hollenspiel, designed by Robert Dulesky. This is one of, uh, one of my favorite Hollenspiel games. In fact, Wars of Marcus Aurelius, which was designed before this game, um, dealt with a different time in Roman history, used some of the similar mechanics, and was a very interesting uh, game, I thought. Also designed by Robert Dulesky. So this is kind of his follow-up effort. Uh, Stilico is a half-barbarian, half-Roman general <clears throat> and umper, under Emperor Heronius. And uh, he is trying to restore the world uh, to proper order and fight off uh, the barbarians from Germania Magna, as well as the Goths from the east, Alicrium. And then you've also got a usurper up here on the top. You've got uh, Constantine the Third, so you can see his counter. And uh, so you're trying to prevent those three from destroying you, taking over Rome or Ravenna. Uh, the Vandals never really defeat you. They'll end in Galatia and just continually pummel you and create kind of a wave of unrest and revolt through the Empire if you don't uh, take care of that. The game lasts 10 turns or no more than 10 turns. If you can beat it before that, you win and you're going to gain uh, some extra victory points. You can see the turn track in the top here. We're starting at turn one. Each turn has three separate rounds, and then a housekeeping phase, and then the turn uh, advances. The first year of this game is 406, and will progress all the way to the end if you make it 415. Uh, the game is card-driven, <clears throat> so you'll notice two stacks of cards here. This stack of cards is the Barbarian deck. It is uh, These cards will activate one of these three uh, tribes to move against you, move down the track, trying to uh, end in your cities or at the end of their track. There are also really bad events that will make you lose soldiers, uh, lose different things, etc. Just Just a really tough, tough deck. You'll notice there's this little uh, enemy deck kind of board. It's actually a little canvas map very very cool you're going to play three of those enemy cards each of these rounds and then if they are barbarian activation cards i'll show you one of those in a minute in a minute they're going to go into in order into the surge spaces once you get three of those in a row you're going to activate what's called a surge it's basically a double whammy and you're going to get hit by a series of bad events and more activations so you want to prevent this, this anytime that you can. There are certain Roman cards that will allow you to do that. You can always discard a card to prevent a surge. I don't do that a whole lot unless it really matters. The other deck you have is a Roman deck. Those are your cards as the Roman player. Those decks are your economy. You have to discard one of those cards to take any number of, of actions from suppressing revolt or unrest, countering Olympias, who's fighting against you in the court of the emperor, attacking one of the tribes, um, moving guys between armies if you need them, and that will happen occasionally, and, and a couple of other actions. We'll, we'll talk about those as we go along. Uh, the bad thing about those is each of the three rounds, you get a different amount of cards. The first round, you get five. The second round, you only get three. And the third round, which is kind of winter, you only get uh, you only get one card. So you've really got to do a majority of your work in that first and second round. The third round typically is a preparation uh, for the next round, um, or sometimes it is you know attacking one last time or something something like that. So pretty cool. You can carry over one card from each of the rounds to the to to round around. If you play a card late in the game called Imperial Wedding, 
you can then carry over two cards. That becomes fairly important uh, in the late game. You'll also notice up here there are two different additional stacks of cards, one for the Barbarian deck and one for the Roman deck. Those are called Light War cards. They come in at the beginning of turn six in uh, 411. And they're going to add some different events, some, some bad things, and then some more powerful cards for you to hopefully try to wrap this up. So what's your goal? Your goal, survive, but get all three of these enemies to surrender by driving them back to their home space. Constantine is in Britannia. He's a usurper. Uh, the Vandals are here in Germania Magna. And then the Goths are here in a, a, a Illyricum um, in their home space there. So you got to get those all in there, fight them in their home space, and then they go into the surrendered box. But it's not over then. Once they get activated again by cards, they ha they can do what's called an Oathbreaker check. You you're going to leave three or four armies there, and they have to roll over the amount of army and combat strength that you have if they do they're back in the game, and that really sucks. You'll also notice you don't have a ton of guys. You start with 12. I've got three deployed to the map as garrisons. That's a recommendation and I believe a very important part of the game. Um, and then I've got nine that are deployed here to two different armies. Going to try to fight the Goths. And then um, Saurus is just going to try to attack occasionally um, Constantine if he gets close. You've also got a couple of extra comitatensis here in this board and a new leader. Those come out with event cards. You're going to need to get those out as soon as, uh, as, soon as possible. So with that, um, you can also lose the game if Samakis ever gets to this box. You will then be executed. Uh, your head will be cut off. So you got to fight him as well. He's kind of working behind you in the court. Uh, telling lies and, and spreading rumors about you and your efforts. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I, uh, I'm i going to use this Imperial Wedding card in these boxes because sometimes the, I, I forget which card I'm on, so I'm going to use that. I do have another blank token somewhere, but I don't know where it went. So I'll leave that here. I'll, I'll put it on there, and then we'll figure something out uh, when we when we go from there. Combat's pretty simple. You add up your combat totals, and then each side rolls a d6. The red die will always be the Romans. The blue die will always be the barbarians. You then compare your competing numbers. If you tie, you roll again. If you defeat them, they are driven back. If they defeat you, you lose uh, one of your legions, and you must uh, put them into the recovery box. So that's not a good thing. We don't want that to happen. All right, so let's go ahead and do our first three cards. I'm going to try to do this quickly. So this is a Barbarian Activation cards. It says the Vandals. The Vandals are the yellow box or the yellow track. Uh, and that face simply means you will activate them. Now this Surge box, this card's going to be placed down here in the Surge space. Once there are three of those in the boxes down there, you're going to activate a Surge. And the Vandals will activate again and um, Olympias will fight against you. So... That was our first card. We'll put that there. The Vandals simply are going to move down to Aquitania. Second card. All right, this is an event card. Court Intrigues. Advance Olympias times one, then roll a die. Embolden the indicated enemy and add a mutiny on that front. All right, so we're going to advance Olympias one space. If he gets up there, we're, we're going to lose. Sorry, I just hit the camera stand. Then we're going to roll a D6. We're going to roll a five. So the Vandals, on the Vandals um, army, which I don't have an army now, there is a mutiny. In order for me to get rid of that, I need to discard a card and move Olympias up. But I don't really care about that right now because, one, I don't have an army uh, in there. And I'm not really that uh, interested in fighting at this moment. Um and I'm trying to remember if that at the end of a turn, I feel like those are discarded, but maybe they are not. Uh, remove purple cloak. No, you got you got to get rid of those. So I'll I'll ultimately get rid of that when I when I need to. Um, 
But then we're going to add that mutiny. And uh, if if uh, the Vandals were what's called, uh, what is it called? It's not, it's emboldened or not dismayed. I'm trying to remember the name for it. But there are two sides on these counters. One is be better. This is their emboldened side. Demoralized is the word. And then that's their demoralized side. So we don't, nothing happens with that card because they were not demoralized. So we're going to go ahead and leave that in the second spot. Now we're going to move to the third card. And we get an unrest in Italia and in Naria. Add an unrest to Italia and Naria or flip an unrest to a revolt. That's Italia and Naria is right here. You will lose the game if you ever have five of those out on the map at the end of a turn or at the end of a, a, a round, or I'm sorry, a turn. So you want to make sure and take care of those. They also make it harder to fight the, the Goths here. When that's there, they're going to add one to their combat strength. All right, so we survived the first round. Not too bad. We really only had one activation. A lot of times, Constantine will just run down the track. It's glad to see the Goths didn't move as well. And we only added one card uh, to the uh, to the surge space. Let's go ahead and draw five Roman cards because we're at the end of uh, we're at the Roman phase in our turn. So I'll, I'll show you these cards really quickly. I'm not going to go over each one of them every time. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but but they have different titles: consulship, deception, action card. These action cards are just generic. Generic. You literally discard these to take any number of actions. And then here's a special card. You'll notice it has laurels at the top. When you play this card, you're going to discard it to your history pile. So that's going to come out of the deck. So it's a one use. If you use this just to take an action by discarding it, it stays in the deck. So this one says the Goths retreat one space. This event name may not be used if there is a mutiny on that front or a temporary truce with the Goths in effect. So I have to decide, I'm definitely going to play Consulship, where I'm going to draw two additional Roman cards, which is really nice. Uh, I got Olympias Retreats, two spaces, which I'm not worried about him right now, and then another generic. So I now have, all of a sudden, six cards. I can basically take six different actions and hopefully can get these Barbarians, the Goths, particularly moving, uh, moving backwards. So, am I going to worry about that? Probably not going to worry about the unrest right now. Oh, here's another really cool card, Deception. I can replace an enemy card in a surge space with this card. And when the surge goes off, one enemy of my choice will retreat. So I'm actually going to play that to replace this enemy activation card. It will simply go into the discard pile. So a very cool, uh, cool concept there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to attack the Goth. So I'm going to discard that one card. So I'm using Stilico's army who is on the Goth's track. Stilico is a leader who has two combat strength. I have six Comitats. Um, that gives me six combat plus two for the leadership. I'm an eight to his five, but he's plus one. He has a six. So I've discarded a card. I'm simply going to roll off. Okay, not great. All right, so my, my total modified roll is a 9, and his is a 12, so I lose. But, ironically, very interesting, he rolled a 6, I rolled a 1. Now, there's special things that happen when that occurs. I'll show you. Uh, first off, the Roman 1, when you roll a 1, you're most likely going to lose that battle. But Olympias, he just loves that. He revels in it. So he's going to rub that in the emperor's face and say, Ah, Stilico lost another battle. But it's only when Stilico leads an army and he rolls a one. Now, when the Barbarians roll a six, they will become emboldened. Now, this guy's already emboldened, so it doesn't matter. If he had rolled a one, he would become demoralized. I would flip him over. So what is the consequence of losing a battle? I lose one Comatot. It's going to go to recovery. So now, all of a sudden, my combat strength drops from an eight to a seven. So that's... It, it, it's just what it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to take out... 
I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take out that unrest because that that's now going to hurt me. So I have to roll a d6. I have to roll higher than the number on that counter, which is a one. I rolled a two, barely. It comes off and goes back to the supply. So I have three actions. All of a sudden, a very promising turn has turned kind of sour. I'm going to discard that card to attack the Goths again. Once again, I'm a seven to his five. All right, so I'm a modified 10 to his seven. He moves back. I won the battle. So let's see. I really want to hold on to that one just in case. And I do want to go ahead and play this card now, Olympias Retreats uh, Two Spaces. So I'm going to throw that out of the game. Olympias is now going to be retreated twice, and he goes back to zero. Very important to keep him in check. If he gets out of control, you're done for. All right, I'm going to hold this card over, so I'm going to keep that in my hand. We're now going to move to round two. So we start with the three more Barbarian cards. So Barbarian card number one is an activation for the Vandals. That goes here. The Vandals will activate once. Uh, that moves down into the Surge space. Now we'll draw the second card. So this says all demoralized enemies retreat. Well, unfortunately, there's nobody that's demoralized. So that card just goes in there. And for my third card of the round, I activate for the first time Constantine. So we take off the cannot attack marker because you can't attack Constantine until he's first activated. So he's going to activate and move to Duracortorum. So he's moving one close uh, space closer to you. So that's the third card of the deck, but you'll notice <coughs> we've now filled all three of the surge spaces. So a surge will go ahead and uh, go off. So remember, I put this card in there with a special surge effect. One enemy of my choice will retreat one space. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do the Goths just because I, I want to try to defeat them. So I move them back. So now uh, the Vandals are going to activate and then that black deck means that it's going to shuffle. So the Vandals will move here. There's no other effect with that, although that's uh, not great. And then we're going to shut. And here's what the rules are kind of unclear on this. I'm going to do the shuffle now at this point. So everything that's in the discard is going to get uh, reshuffled. So you'll notice that third surge card is not in the discard. So I didn't reshuffle it in. Now, maybe that's a, that needs to be corrected or I'm doing it wrong. The third surge is just an activation of Constantine. So we'll throw that in the discard. Constantine will move down to the siege space at Aralet, where he must wait a turn until he's activated again, and then we'll have an opportunity to attack my garrison, which has a fortification uh, value. So that's the end of this second Barbarian activation. Let's go ahead and draw, and I only draw three cards this time, but I did carry one card over, so I have four cards. So real quickly... So this is a cool card. I'm going to put my glasses on. So Constantine, uh, he, until the end of the next round, every time he activates, either embolden him or conduct an attack versus the Vandals. This is a very good card because it's going to allow Constantine not to attack me, but to attack the Vandals. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Um, if Vandals win, no effect and one to six affect morale for both sides. You cannot play cards to alter these battles nor attack Constantine until after the end of the next round. Ignore if either, either side is surrendered, so we're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna place this out here, reminding myself that I've kind of made a deal with Constantine III to go ahead and attack the Vandals. So let's hope he gets activated a couple of times next round. So now I have three cards left. Okay, these aren't great, but they're they're okay. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to discard this card uh, to go ahead and just do an attack against the the Goths. So once again, I'm a seven and he's a five. Okay, so I defeat him. I'm a twelve on his eight. He retreats. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and discard one more time. This means that this can be used in battle. This is a battle event. So if I lose, I actually don't uh, lose one of the comatatensis. So I'm going to discard this to just attack them. And now they're tougher. They have an intrinsic defensive value there uh, in Tarsatica. So he's now a seven and I'm a seven as well. So this is basically a straight roll off. Let's hope. All right. So that's a tie. I have to re-roll. And I, I beat him. I rolled a four and he rolled a two. So I'm an 11 on his nine. So he retreats. So with my final card, I'm going to go ahead and actually force the Goths to retreat. So I'm going to play this card. It will go out of my deck. It will go into my history pile. And he's going to retreat to his home space, um, which is where I need him to be so that I can defeat him next turn. Now, I am done. We're going to go to round three. So remember, if Constantine is activated by a card draw, he's going to attack the Vandals. He's not going to attack me. Let's hope uh, that works out uh, in my favor. First card. All right, we're going to roll a die and embolden the indicated enemy and put a mutiny on that front. So we, we roll a, a one. So Constantine will become emboldened. He was already emboldened. And we're going to put a mutiny on, uh, the, on that front. I'm trying to figure out where that mutiny is. There it is. So that's this. So that army cannot attack whenever there's a mutiny there. Dang it. So I really hope that he gets activated, but ah, he did get activated. Sweet. So remember, Constantine, because of my card, is now going to attack the Vandals. And we're on the third card. So Constantine's a six versus the Vandals that are a four. We're going to roll these dice. All right, it's it's uh, six plus two for Constantine. He's red. That's an eight plus four and two is six. The Vandals will retreat. So that was beneficial to me because Constantine didn't retreat from or attack me. And he also, I'm sorry, I moved him back too far. He should have moved here to uh, Perrin and Montes. Um, so now he's there. He also has an intrinsic value next time. But that stopped Constantine from activating against me this turn. So that's kind of worked out. All right, well, the Goths are going to activate, so they're going to move out of their home space. So I just kind of wasted that card. Them's the breaks. All right, so this card goes into the discard pile. I will use that again, hopefully later in the game. I'm going to draw my one card for round three, and I got a temporary truce. I get to place this on an enemy of my choice. And as long as that holds, uh, ignore their activations. They'll still be moved to the surge. During their next round, I may not attack them. So it's like we're, uh, we're, we're done, and then at the end of that turn that gets removed. So, uh, you, you know, it's one of those things. I might do that on Constantine because, one, I have a mutiny. I, I don't know. This is a tough choice. I'm actually going to go ahead and discard this card, move up Olympias 1, which is the condition to remove a mutiny. Discard one card and advance Olympias to remove. <coughs> so there we go. All right, housekeeping phase. No events that are out that need to be removed. There's no markers out that need to be removed. I'm still alive. So we move to round one and we advance to turn number two. So we go back to the barbarians. All right. Choose one of the following. Activate the Goss times three or discard one Roman card from your hand and advance Olympias. I unfortunately don't have a Roman card, so I'm going to have to activate the Goss times three, which sucks. The good thing about this is that card will now go out of the deck. So we're going to throw that out. Goths will get three activations. So literally all that hard work I did is just undone. That's sometimes the way the cookie crumbles in this game. Court intrigues. Advance Olympias times one and then roll a die. Embolden the enemy and, and add a mutiny to that front. So this is the same thing. He's going to move up. Roll in a D6. We roll a five. That's the Vandals. The Vandals already have... I have to roll again. The bottom of the card, it says that there's already a mutiny. Roll again. 
So we rolled a one, so that's Constantine. So I just, <laughs> that's just what happens. So I have to put a mutiny there, and my soldiers are unhappy with me and will not, uh, will not stand for that. That was my second card. So we move to our third card, and we're going to get a surge, of course. So the Goths are going to move. Then we're going to go through the surge card. So Constantine gets activated twice. So let's deal with him first. He is now sieging Aralet. He's a six. I'm a five. Four for the intrinsic. One for my comatot. I'm the red. Okay. All right. So he rolled a one. So he's going to become demoralized, but he's a seven. I'm a five plus two is a seven. We tie. That demoralization takes effect. And we have to roll again. So he rolls a six. He's going to destroy my garrison and become emboldened. So the garrison goes down here. Uh, you know what? One thing I forgot. I could I could have replaced this wounded guy back into Stilicos at the uh, during the housekeeping phase. That's the one thing I forgot. So now Stilicos army is back. All right. So then Constantine will activate a second time and move uh, move there. So his activations are done. The Goths are going to activate. I, I could lose this game right now. We're going to go down here, and then the Goths get to activate again. So they move into the siege space, which doesn't happen this round. So you can see this game's very, very challenging, and sometimes the cards just do not work out in your favor. So I'm going to draw my five cards, and now I'm going to go through my actions. Okay, that's a good one. That's also a good one, but it's, that's also a very good one. Okay, so that gives me plus two. Some, some decent cards, particularly for battle, which is what I'm interested in doing right now because I'm in, I'm in some deep doo-doo. All right, well... I'm going to go ahead and use this card to end a mutiny. So we're going to end this mutiny. And why is that valuable? Because normally I have to discard a card and move Olympias up. With that card, I literally just end the mutiny. So somehow we worked out a deal. Uh, we gave them better gr uh, grog or something or some ale uh, as they were out on the frontier fighting uh, Constantine. So I still have four cards. What am I going to do? Well... I've really got to attack the Goths at least once, maybe twice, and I should probably attack Constantine um, with this army, but this is not going well for me at this point. Okay. Man. Well, I'm going to go ahead and discard this card just to uh, take an attack here against the Goths. So Stilico at an eight is going up against the Goths at a five with no cards. So we roll three, I defeat him and I push him back. I'm also gonna play this card. After winning an attack, demoralize the enemy and retreat them one additional space. If used against Constantine III and Dura Cortorum, I can't retreat him past Benonia. So I'm gonna demoralize the Goths and move them to Palencia. So, that got me basically another space without having to defeat him in combat one more time. So it, it really ends up being uh, being the same, the same thing. All right, I feel like I'm playing very defensively, and this is not going to go well for me at this point. But I gotta get gotta get Constantine back a little bit. The problem is I'm only a four, so I'm gonna discard this card to attack Constantine. And I'm going to play this Frankish Mercenary card where I get plus two to my attack. So all of a sudden, I'm a six on his six. This is a gamble. Let's see how it, how it play, pays off. Well, probably not. Oh, great. Okay, so I defeat him by one. I was a six. Four plus two for the card. Six plus six is 12. He's six plus five is 11. You'll notice I rolled a six, but this army is not led by Stilico. 
So I just get to push him back. I don't demoralize him or do anything else, and that's going to end uh, end my uh, my turn in the round. So we're going to move to round two. Let's move this back. So that looks better than it did. All right. We're going to place an unrest in Italia and in Aria. So we're going to gain one of those unrest. We're going to put it right back there. We just, didn't we just get rid of that? Now the Vandals are going to act, and you'll notice that surge is a little bit different. We're going to add unrest or flip unrest to revolt if that's pulled and the Vandals are in in an in a area. All right. So we're going to go ahead and put that one there. So the Vandals will activate once and move to Galatia. That one's going to come down. So we've got that second card there into the surge. And the Vandals are going to activate again. So when they activate and they are in Galatia, what happens is unrest gets put in order in Hispania, Septum Provencia, Gallia, Italia Ananaria, or Italia Suburbicara. Or, short of that, you flip these to uh, their revolt side, which is just harder to get rid of. So we survived. We, we missed a surge. The next round is going to have some surge effects. Not much we can do about it at this point. All right, let's go ahead and draw our three cards. Not going very well here, guys. I normally have had the Goths surrender usually by this point, but it, it just didn't work in my favor this time. Okay, this is a good one. It, it can prevent a an activation, which, which is important. I might hold on to that one. I can choose, I can either reshuffle my discards and into my deck and draw a card or re-roll a card. And then I can replace one enemy surge card uh, with this surge card. And I'm probably not going to do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually going to discard that card that would have, I'm going to go ahead and attack, I'm going to attack the Goths. I'm an eight on his four. This should be an easy victory. And I, I defeat him 12 to 12 to eight. All right, so I push him back. I'm actually going to use this Fortuna to reshuffle the discards into the Roman deck and draw a new card. So let me go ahead and get all those beautiful cards that I've used. We'll go ahead and reshuffle and get to draw one new card. That gets some of those better cards that I've already used back into the deck. So I, I drew, <laughs> I think there are two of these in the deck, so I literally pulled, pulled that out again. That, that's just the way it goes. All right. So, got to remember here, I forgot to add that unrest into the combat. I still would have won. Dang it. Well, I'm going to discard this to attack the Goths one more time. I'm an eight on his five. Okay, we each rolled sixes. So, I'm going to win. So, he's going to retreat. But remember, when he rolls a six... He becomes emboldened, even though I defeated him. And when I roll a six with an army led by Stilico, Olympias moves down one, which is a good thing. Um, I'm going to hold on to this card. I'm not going to attack again. I feel like I've done kind of what I need to do this turn. Let's move on to round three. We're almost on a, on a surge. We put an unrest in Septum Provenciae which is right here. So that affects attacks now into that area. The Vandals are going to activate, which means they'll place another unrest here in Gallia. And then we go through the surge, which this is really gonna, gonna hurt a little bit. In the diocese this enemy occupies, which currently is Hispania, add unrest or flip unrest to revolt. If Galatia, activate army instead. Well, they're going to add on. So we're going to add unrest in the order Italia Suburbicaria. 
in the dice. No, we're going to flip this to revolt. That's what we're going to do. So that one goes out. Now, this is a unique symbol. They're actually, the vandals are going to retreat, which is good. They will retreat back one space. And then here they will move back there and Olympias will increase one on his track. So they move back here. And that was just the first card, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and pull our second. So we're going to embolden the Goths. Of course, they're already emboldened. So that, that doesn't activate them. It just emboldens them. So that's the second card. We're now on our third card. We're going to add unrest to Gallia or flip from unrest to revolt. So we've now all of a sudden got some bad revolts going on in unrest. So this is not going well uh, for me at this point. So we're in the last round. We're just going to draw the one card. Okay, we can draw two Roman cards. We'll go ahead and do that. Or should I hold on to that one? I'm going to hold on to that one for the next round. Getting a lot of cards that next round, I think, will be really nice. Um, I'm going to do the Fortuna card to attack. Or should I try to get rid of some un unrest? I'm actually going to go ahead and try to get rid of this unrest here so I have to roll higher than a one I do. Now, there are some cards that say get rid of a couple of unrest. Those are very important and powerful. You'll want to use those as much as you uh, as much as you can. So let's go to the housekeeping phase. Nothing changes. Um, yeah, I, I do. I can put this guy who was a garrison here at Aralette. I can put him into an army. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put him into uh, Saurus so that he has a five total to maybe combat Constantine a little better. And then we just move to the next turn. So we are on turn three. Start again with Barbarian cards. Card number one. Troops defect to Constantine. Embolden Constantine. He's already emboldened. We're going to roll a die. We're hoping to roll high on this. We rolled a two. I'm going to move one Comitatensis or Garrison of my choice to Recovery. If Constantine III is surrendered, ignore and place an enemy discard pile instead of History. So this one's going to go out of the game. And I'm going to... Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and just remove this guy to, to recovery from his army. He's not as important right now. So that was the first card. We're going to the second card. Constantine, the booger's going to activate twice, which sucks. So that's going to put him right in Verona, right on my doorstep again. Now we move to the third card, and the stinking vandals are going to activate, but guess what? We have a... Uh, we have a surge upcoming. So they're going to activate. They're going to put that unrest back here in Italia and in Aria. No, what am I doing? I... Oh, that was the activation. Now we do the surge. So the Goths are going to activate. All right, this is kind of an interesting situation. So the Goths run into Constantine the Third. That's going to be a combat. So the Goths will be red. Constantine will be blue. Goths are a five, Constantine's a six. Okay, so that's going to be a tie. 11 to 11, we re-roll. Okay, so that's an eight for the Goths, a seven for Constantine. They helped us out. Now they move into that spot. So I'm, I'm totally good with that. And then this deck, which includes this, is going to get... But all of these have reshuffles. I'm just going to wait. So Constantine now will get activated again and go into fight uh, the Goths. So it's six to a five. Constantine is red. Okay, so 11 to an eight. The Goths will be defeated. Constantine will move there. We're going to reshuffle that deck here in just a minute because we got to do it again. And the Vandals are going to activate, and we're going to place an unrest in Italia Suburbica. And then we're going to shuffle uh, this deck. Let's try to give this a good shuffle. And that was the final card of this phase. Was it not? Or was that the first one? Yeah, I kind of got, I think I got mixed up. No. 
maybe. If I mess it up, that so be it. It doesn't really happen that often to me when I'm playing a game, but I have it here in the third spot, but I'm thinking... I think that was the second card, so I think we have one more card to activate. So we're going to put Unrest in Hispania or Flip to Revolt. So it's already there. So there's nothing that's going to happen, and that's the third and final card. All right, so I'm going to draw five cards. Um, it, is, it is time, folks, for me to have something happen or this game is going to end very quickly. So I've got to figure out how to how to make some hay today. Well, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, I'm going to play consulship that I held over from last turn. I'm going to draw two more Roman cards. Having more cards is very, very important. Okay, I can make the Vandals retreat for free. I can deploy leaders, don't really need that. Make an attack with plus two to the Roman attack value. So this card's a little different than the card that we played before. I can use this card as an attack. It says make an attack, and then I add plus two. So that's a little bit different than the other one that just said add plus two. Uh, play after winning an attack to demoralize. That, that could be important. I can end a mutiny, which I probably will do. And I can remove two re uh, unrest or revolts, which I'm, I'm going to go ahead and play that one right now to remove both of these. So that helped a little bit. Um, so I still have six cards to play. So I, I really need, I need to get these Goths back. I don't have a ton of great cards, but we'll, we'll see what, what happens. So I'm going to discard this one just to attack straight up. He's a five. I'm an eight. All right. Oh, good. So I defeat him 13 to a, uh, he's not an eight. He's a five. 13 to a 6, he's going to become demoralized and have to retreat. That's very nice, because I, I probably can get him to surrender here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to discard this card to take another action. So once again, I'm an 8, and he's a 6. 4 plus 2, please. Okay, I win, and I roll a 6, so... Olympias is going to uh, retreat on his track. So I'm now 14 on his 8, so I defeat him. He moves back. And I haven't used some of my better cards. So here's what I'm going to do. I thought I had the... No. Okay, so he's already demoralized. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm just going to discard that to attack him. He's an eight on my eight. This is literally a straight up roll. I might show you how to use a reserve card. I haven't explained that yet. Okay. Hey, I win. So I'm an eight and a five is a 13 on his 11. So he retreats. Awesome. Okay. So I still have three cards. I'm going to go for it. So I'm going to make an attack with this card, so it's gonna be at plus two to my Roman attack value. So I'm an eight plus two is a 10 on his 11. And I'm just praying that these dice come out in my favor, and they do, yes. 11 and six is a 17. Seven plus four is 11, plus three is a 14. I defeat the Goths, they are surrendered. I'm gonna place them here in the surrendered box. You'll also notice Stilico rolled, Stilico rolled a six. So Olympias is going to retreat again. And that worked out really well for me. So now, here's what I want to do. And I'm going I'm to explain this when I do this. I'm going to... Dang it. So I'm just going to discard this card to do what is called... I'm trying to remember what that's called. Uh, not place garrisons. Um, not attack, transfer a leader or comitatensis so I can move guys around by discarding that card. So I'm going to bring Saris over to the goth track. And I think I can switch places. 
Okay, so I, I'm going to go ahead and move Stilico over to Constantine because that's who I'm going to go after next. And I'm going to show you a special, well, I'm probably not going to get to it till next turn. And then with him, Constantine, or uh, Stilico is going to bring, he's going to bring two soldiers. So I would be a seven at this point, three, four, five, and I'm leaving five in this goth area because I'm going to have to protect against him activating and breaking his oath of, of surrender. So with that, I've still got one card left. I'm going to go ahead and discard it to simply attack Constantine here in Verona. So I've got five Comitats and my two leader. I'm a seven to his six. This is a real chance. So I win. Uh, 10 to his 9, so he moves to Metalanum, and I'm now out of cards, but what I've done is I've provided myself a little breathing room, and then next turn I'm going to show you how to defeat Constantine using the surrendered Goths as long as they don't reactivate. We'll see. So we move to round 2 of turn 3. We're going to draw 3 cards, so here's the first. All right. If the Goths are at Verona or closer, move them into Roma, placing any garrisons at Palencia or Faisal into recovery. Not the case. If there is a garrison at Roma, put the Goths in the seed space instead. Nope. Otherwise, embolden and activate times two. If the Goths have surrendered or are under temporary truce, ignore effect and put the card in the discard pile. So, we're going to ignore this card because of what it said. He surrendered, and it's just going to go into... Uh, the discard pile, but that counts as one of the cards that was drawn. So that card could be really bad if they were still on the track, but th they've surrendered, so I, uh, I I avoided it. All right, we're going to advance Olympias, and we're going to add a mutiny to the front. Good gracious, that freaking card keeps coming up. All right, so we rolled a two, which is Constantine, of course. That's the one that I wanted to frickin' attack next turn. So I've got a mutiny. Well, damn it. So that, that's my second card. So now the third card is Constantine. So he's going to activate the bastard. So he's going to move back to Verona after I smoked him a little bit. All right, so we're, we're going to draw three cards. Unfortunately, this is probably not going to be able to show you what I was trying to show you just because... It's just not going to work. Okay. No. All right. Well, first off, I've got to get rid of my mutiny on Constantine's track because I can't do anything. So I'm going to discard a card, which is one of the requirements, and move Olympias up one to get rid of that freaking mutiny. Got to keep these soldiers happier. I'm not sure why they don't like me, um, but they don't. Then, I'm going to go ahead and discard just to attack Constantine. I can't leave him. So, I'm a 7 on his 6. Basically becomes a roll-off. Hey, awesome. So, I rolled a 6, 13 to his 11. He's going to retreat. And what happens to Olympias? He moves back. He retreats on his track because I rolled a 6 with an army controlled by Stilico. My final card, I feel like I need to hit him one more time. I'm going to go ahead and just discard it to attack. So, anyway, I've got a 7 to his 6. This is very risky. I don't know why I keep doing this, but it, it's working. And Olympias moves down because I rolled a 6. Man, I'm getting really lucky. Okay, I feel like I'm in good shape right now. i got to start taking care of some of this. I want desperately to show you how to use a surrendered goth to attack, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how that works. But we now move on to round three. We're gonna draw the first card. Unrest in Italia and in Aria. I'm gonna add unrest or flip to revolt. So we're gonna put unrest back there. Good gravy. Second card. They just keep coming up. Okay, Constantine's gonna activate. So he's gonna move back to Mediolanum. And my third card to be drawn is the Vandals will activate. Then that's going to cause a surge. So let's go ahead and activate the Vandals first. So we're going to put Italia Suburbicana. 
And I can tell you right now I'm in significant trouble because there are five unrest revolt markers out. If I can't get rid of one of those next turn, I'm going to automatically lose the game. So the Goths have went. All right, so surge effect. Constantine's going to go. So he's going to move here. Then Olympias is going up. So that's that card. Constantine will go twice. So he moves into the surge. He has to wait till the next turn, so that ends up getting wasted. That's a benefit uh, for me. I believe that's the way that's adjudicated. And then those damn vandals are going to activate again. We've got unrest in every area, so they're going to flip the next one to revolt. And that's what they do. And then we're going to reshuffle this stupid deck, which just means those freaking activations get put back in there time and time again. Hopefully I get a really good distribution and maybe get some of those out. All right. Well, that was the third and final card for this round. So I get my one Roman card. And, and all I can do is I've got to try to get rid of one of these unrests. So I'm going to discard it. I have to roll a two or higher. I lose the game. So I do. I, I rolled uh, three. So that comes off. All right, so that's the end of my turn. We go to housekeeping. There's no truce markers, no temporary things. The revolts stay. He's still there sieging. Um, I can move this soldier back here. The, the other interesting thing here is I have yet to see the cards that allow me to bring up additional soldiers. Those are very important, but they have not come out yet. All right, so let's go back. We're going to move on to turn four. So let's activate. The, let's do the first card. So we've got the Goths. Okay, the Goths have surrendered. And Saurus has an army with four legions plus his combat value of five. We're going to roll a D6. If I roll a six, he's going to come back into the game. Okay, thank heavens. Whew. That's why it's important to get another army out so that I can hold them and really prevent them. All right, Vandals are going to activate, so they're going to flip. They're going to put an unrest back here, so once again, I'm in dire straits. And then those damn Goths activate again. If they roll a six, all right, I'm counting that. That rolled out of the thing. That's a two, so they don't... Uh, thing. Now, we've got a surge. So the surge effect for this one, in the diocese, this enemy occupies add unrest or flip unrest to revolt. Nothing happens because he's not in a diocese. So that's not going to happen. Now, the vandals are going to surge tw twice. So they're literally going to flip once, twice. So everything is in revolt. This is really bad. I do know one thing I can do. I can remove a garrison to get rid of a revolt. That, that's what I will do uh, as part of my turn. That does not require a, a card discard uh, either. So the Goths activate with this surge effect. So once again, okay, whew, they rolled a five. Had they rolled a six, they were going to come back into the game. So you can see this is really dicey. Okay, we've survived that round. I get my five cards, and we've got some work to do. Got really lucky that Constantine did not activate that round. Okay, well, great. Okay. Yeah. Okay, not terrible. So what am I going to do? I'm actually, once again, I'm going to move this garrison to recovery. Because the Goths have surrendered, I don't need a garrison there to get rid of this revolt. So that that's an action that doesn't require, require a card discard. That's something he just goes here to recovery. And then next time I'm going to put him here with Saurus and that will eliminate the threat of him ever being able to, uh, to revolt. So I'm going to go ahead and attack. I have to attack Constantine. So I'm a two, four, six. I'm an eight on his six. Ah, oh, sweet. Olympus moves down. I defeat him. He moves back here. 
Ah, you know what? He was plus two because of that. So let's make sure I was correct on that. Two, four, six, eight, 14, and 11. So he was 14 on my 11. So I did, I did defeat him. All right. So what else am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and discard this to get rid of that revolt. Kind of forgot about that. Okay, rolled a six, so that revolt goes away. But that's, you know, I I, I couldn't attack Constantine, so that, that's not great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just discard this to attack Constantine again. So I'm an eight on his six. Yeah. I'm a 10, he, he defeats me, so I lose an army, and he stays there. He was already emboldened, so I have to go ahead and try to attack him again, and now I'm, I got to get him back. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I discarded that card to activate an attack, so I'm going to show you how to use an, a, a, a surrendered tribe to, to aid in attacking, because I want to show you this. All right, so right here on the map, it says, if the Goths had surre have surrendered, discard one card. I'm going to discard my last card. And advance Olympias on the track one to add plus four to my attack value when attacking Constantine the Third or the Vandals. So I'm literally using the surrendered Goths to go ahead and attack there. So I'm a seven, plus four is an 11 to his six. Okay, so I win. 15, so I, I push him back. That's the end of my activation. So that's how you use these surrendered tribes. That is about the only way to end up ultimately beating Constantine. Because, man, when he gets up here, that seven intrinsic defensive value is so hard to defeat. All right, let's move to round two. So we're going to do our three cards. So Constantine, this doesn't activate him. It simply emboldens him. He's emboldened. So we avoid that. Unrest in Italia and in Aria. That card just freaking keeps coming back. Italia and in Aria, right freaking here. Third and final card this round is the Goths. So we're going to roll. <laughs> All right, so the Goths come back into the game. Now that sucks for many, many reasons because remember... The whole goal here is to get all three of them to surrender, and now one of them got back on the board. I did discard this card, and I felt bad about doing it because this is a very, very valuable card. Right here. Advance Olympias one space to prevent one enemy from unsurrendering during the Oathbreaker check. I wanted to hold that card over, but I also wanted to show you that concept because I could have stopped them from revolting, and now all of a sudden I'm... Well, their turn is over. I'm going to draw three cards, but it's going to be real hard for me to uh, get them to re-surrender right now with the way that it's that it's going. So I'm just going to draw three cards. Oh, you know what? I got a Barbarian card for some reason in there. Oh, well, oops. That was a bad mistake. So I've got three cards. Oh, that might not be bad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move all the cards from the surge spaces to the discard pile. There are two cards in that surge space, so they're going to go away. That lets me avoid activating Constantine and the Goths again. So then, my goodness, I feel like I'm going to go ahead and just attack. I'm going to try to attack uh, Constantine with... Uh, with Stilico. So I'm a two, four, five. I'm a seven on his six. Ah, jeez. Ah, we each rolled ones. So I'm a seven plus one is eight. He's six plus one is seven. I defeat him. He becomes demoralized. Uh, but I rolled a one. So Olympias is gonna. But I still won the battle. But he, I just didn't win it well enough. That's what Olympias is basically uh, saying. I, man, I, I really don't, I got to get rid of some of this freaking unrest. Yeah, I'm going to discard this simply to 
try to get rid of that revolt. And I didn't. I rolled a two. I needed to roll a three or higher. So let's go to round three. We get our three barbarian cards. Advance Olympias times one. Randomly discard one Roman card from my hand. I don't have any Roman cards, so that doesn't hurt me. Other than Olympias going up. The Va Vandals will activate. So they're going to... Damn it. So it's the same situation as last time. Third and final card is Constantine activating twice. So, oh my gosh, it just gets so difficult. And I'm done with the Barbarian turn. I only draw one card this turn. I have to discard it to try and attempt to get rid of one of these unrest. I'll get rid of this one. Okay, I did, or I would have just lost the game. But I saved myself. Okay. Housekeeping. We're just going to reorganize. I'm going to put that comatot. Uh, I actually want to move Stilico. So I gotta, I gotta pummel him. Three, four, five. Gotta somehow defeat him. Get him back out of the game quickly. Okay, so we move to the next turn, and one more turn, we're going to add in the late war cards. So we have to survive three of these cards. So the Vandals are going to activate in the first card. Great. So they throw a. <laughs> Another unrest up, and now there's a surge. So they're going to flip that because of this vandal here. Constantine's going to move into the siege, and then this damn deck's going to get uh, reshuffled. The barbarian deck will get reshuffled. I'll just do that. Um, that was my second card. And then the third and the, this uh, surge effect, add unrest or flip if in Galatia. So no, so nothing happens. So that just goes to the discard and that's, uh, I have one, one card to do left. Okay, so we're gonna embolden the Goths. They were already emboldened, so that's fine. Okay, my turn, I'm gonna draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. I gotta try to make them flip and surrender again. Let's see what happens. Just looking at my cards here, sorry. Arrowlet. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this and have Olympias retreat two spaces. I feel like that's pretty valuable at this point in the game. Then I'm going to attack with Stilico against the Goths, trying to get them to surrender. I'm an eight on their 12. I'm gonna play Frankish Mercenaries. So I'll be a 10 on their 12. All right, so I'm a 10 on his 12. And he beats me, damn it. So nothing happens, he just flipping beats me. Let, me. let me see this again. So I'm an eight, 10. That'd be a 13 on his 17. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. I'm actually going to play that card to stop me from losing that comatot from losing that battle because that's going to make a big difference. I'm going to discard a card to attack again. So I'm an 8 on his 12. Very, very hard. And Olympias is going to go up and he defeats me again. And I, I've got to attack Constantine with uh, Saurus, who's a one, two, four, six. So he's a six on his five. Wow. He defeats me, becomes emboldened. And I, wow, that was just horrendous. So this could be the end of the game. We'll, we'll see how this uh, turns out. Card number one. Add unrest to Gallia or flip from unrest. It's already there, so nothing happens. Second card. Aralette declares for Constantine III. If Constantine III is in Gallia, move any garrisons in Duracortorum or Aralette to recovery. Nope, don't have any garrisons there. Embolden him and move him to Aralette. Well, he's already passed that. 
If he's already in Aralette, not in Gallia, or has surrendered, ignore the effects and put this card in the enemy discard instead of the history pile. So he's right here. He's not going to do anything. Third and final card for the round. If the Goths are at Verona or closer, move them into Roma. They are not. If there is a garrison at Roma, put the Goths in the siege space. What? Okay, so that's a qualifier for this. The first part of the sentence is a qualifier. So they're going to activate twice and embolden. Wow. So that's going to go out of the game. My goodness. So that really hurts. Okay, that's my third card. I'm going to go ahead and do my turn. We're, we're probably going to lose this, this next time, folks. But trying to give you a good example of play and, and learn some different things. All right, so I'm going to replace, I'm going to play this card. I'm going to replace that in the surge pile, and then I get to remove, or I get to move a Comatot to an army. So I'm going to move it here to Saras because he's got to beat up Constantine somehow. Or I'm going to lose. So let's go ahead and attack with Saras. So he's a six on Constantine six. Hey, okay. So I'm a 12 on his 11. I beat him, but I don't get the plus one or move Olympias back because this is not Stilico. And then this next card is I'm going to embolden. It's that Constantine card where he's going to attack the Vandals the next time he activates. So I'm going to place that out on the board just to remind myself. I wish there was a marker and there is not. Um, so that's my final card play of the turn. Let's move to the final round. We're going to do our three cards. Roll one die, demoralize the indicated enemy. Okay. One, Constantine. So Constantine gets demoralized. All right, nice. I like that one. Please, more of those cards. Quiet in the West. Do not draw any more enemy cards this round. Very nice. Good timing. Prevented me from probably losing the game. Although this Constantine card got wasted because I didn't get any activations. So I'm going to do one now. All right, so I've got, to, I've got to try to get rid of this unrest rather than using that great card. So I rolled a three, I get rid of the unrest. You can see this is going to be a continual thing because I'm not necessarily getting the cards that I, that I need. All right, housekeeping, don't lose the game. None, nothing's out there. The mutiny's still in effect. I can redo my armies. I'm going to make him a six. Okay, then I'm going to add in, we're going to move to the next turn. I'm going to add in the late game cards. We're going to add all these in and shuffle. So give me a second while I do this. You know, when I play these games, I've played this game probably 25 times. I've only won this three or four times. Um, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of uh, elements that you have to remember. But I will say these, these Hollenspiel games, they do a good job of, one, putting text directly on the board, helping you remember what happens under cer certain circumstances. They also provide you with this whole host of cards here that act as mnemonic devices when you play certain things. Um, I got to get these cards. Sorry. These are all going into my deck. So I feel like these solo games, one of the negatives for me about playing solo is sometimes I forget rules. And having another player to discuss or remember or remind is something that I miss in solo games. But I find when these designers who know how to do solo games design a game, they put these reminders on the board and they help you remember things. So I appreciate that. But you've been watching me now for almost an hour. Uh, and 
you know, I, I just forget certain things. It's, it just, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Okay, so we go back to round one. That's still in there. We draw our first Barbarian card, and it is the Vandals. So they're going to put an unrest out in Italia Suburbica. We're on the second card, Vandals get activated again. So they're going to turn that to Revolt, which just makes it that much more difficult. Deploy won't surge effect for this card that I put in there. Deploy one Comatot from Recovery to an army box or as a garrison. Well, I didn't have anybody in Recovery because I just hit the end of the turn. That's all right. Uh, the Vandals are going to retreat. Thank you, Mr. Retreaty McTreaterson. And then finally, they're going to activate again, moving back to Galatia, and then having all these cards shuffled back in the stinking deck. So let's, let's see. So that is all three of the cards for that turn. I get to draw my five cards. Three, four, five. And we got to make some hay here because this is not going well. Okay. Just trying to look at my cards. Okay, this is a perfect card to draw at this time. All right. I drew Purple, Clo purple Cloak, one of the best cards in the game for the Romans. I'm going to advance at Olympias times two. Olympias gets mad because I'm cavorting with the enemy. I'm going to embolden Constantine the third. Remove mutiny on that front. There is no mutiny. Move him to Aralette until end of year. Every time he's activated, now this is end of year, he attacks the Goths or Vandals, my choice, using his attack value, ignoring defense on the target's spaces. If target loses, they retreat. If target wins, no effect. One and a six will affect morale for both sides. Can't play cards to alter these battles, nor attack him until next year. Ignore if he has surrendered or if Goths and Vandals have. So Purple Cloak, I'm going to put out here on the board to remind myself that this year, every time Constantine activates, he's going to attack my enemies. And that's exactly what I want. Now I'm hoping that every single card comes up and he activates every time. Now, Purple Cloak's going to go out of the game. You can do that one time. But a very advantageous draw of that card really made a, a difference here uh, for me. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discard... I'm going to discard this card, and I'm going to attack the Goths. So he's a 7 two, four, I'm an eight. So he's a seven and I'm an eight. Dang it. All right, so I rolled a four. <sighs> so he's now a 13 and I'm a 12. Good gravy. Really? And that doesn't help. So if I discard two cards and take what's called reserve actions, I can win this battle. I feel like it's important because of the circumstances. So I'm going to discard both of these cards because that puts my total now one higher than him. He has a 7 and 6 is a 13. I'm an 8 and a 4 is a 12 plus 1 for each of those discarded cards. Wait, is that right? 2... Four, six, eight, four is 12. He's a 13, yes. So I would defeat him and move him backwards. Now I'm doing that because I, I know that Constantine most likely is going to attack him. So I can kind of, I can kind of live with that. I think I am going to discard this card to try to get rid of one of these revolts. I'm going to do Italia Suburbica and I do not, I fail. Okay, that card would have been better played. All right, choose one garrison, remove it from the map, and place in recovery. Well, great. So he goes to recovery. There are worse things. Good. Constantine's going to activate. So 
He's going to attack the Goths, and he ignores his defensive space. So it's six to a five. Red is Constantine. So that's 10 to a, an 11. So he wins. Great. That's hilarious. So the third and final card, it's the Vandals. So the Vandals are going to do nothing. Okay, so that's the end of this turn. Well, I get my three cards. <laughs> this game's fun. Very, very fun. Well, I got to get rid of some of this, some of this revolt. So I got a, there's a revolt there. I discard a card, roll to six. So I got rid of it. I'm going to discard another card, roll to get rid of that revolt, roll to three, get rid of it. So that's good. I'm also starting to get really worried about Olympias. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this one to try to drive Olympias back. He's a one. I have a one from my advocate, Samakis. So I'm going to roll a die. I need to roll a two or higher. So I succeed. There's, almost, there's no way I could have failed that, right? So I did drive Olympias back. Unfortunately, that's all my cards for the turn. Let's go to round three. First card. Okay, you got a goth activation. Damn it. Freaking stupid. So now we do surges. Okay. So this is great because Constantine's going to activate twice and be able to attack the goths twice. And he ignores the train valor, remember? So... Okay, he, he loses, and he's going to attack one more time. That could have really, really could have affected the game for me in a positive way. So he rolled a one, so he's demoralized, and he gets beat. Unfortunately, that's all that's going to happen. All right, the Vandals add unrest. So he's already got unrest in the diocese he occupies. So there's there's nothing there that's going to happen. That's a weird one. And then here the Goths activate and Olympias activates. So I basically gain nothing. So that purple cloak did me nothing really this year. And, and sometimes that happens. I've seen Constantine totally kick the crap out of the Goths and they, they end up surrendering because of that. But not in this case. So we get my one card. I'm not in trouble of uh, uh, danger of losing. And I'm just going to hold on to the card. There's nothing I need to do. Actually, that makes me really... Okay, well, there's nothing I need to do, frankly. So I'm going to re... Oh my gosh, I feel like I got to... Six. I feel like I got to try to go for these guys and get them out of here. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go back to round one, and we're in turn seven. This is not looking good, in case you were wondering. Oh, look, Constantine activates. Great. Couldn't have pulled that last time. Second card. Garrison defects. Choose a garrison. Remove it from the map and place in recovery, then embolden. Well, he's not demoralized, and there's no garrison, so this card doesn't do anything. But... The Usurper. Remove any temporary truce marker. If he surrendered, Oathbreaker add plus one. Okay, nothing happens. Okay, sweet. Well, that, that ended up working out well. So that, that round was really pretty good for me because nothing happened bad. I'm going to draw my five cards, add that to the one card that I've got, and I need to make some hay against the Goths this turn. One, they're demoralized, and two, um, they're close to surrendering. Oh, I can, I'll do that one, definitely. Okay, I gotta play this card. All right, before we do anything, I'm gonna play this card. Battle of Fasule. Move a Comatot from the unactivated Comatotensis and Leader's Box to Recovery. That's where you get these other guys. So I'm gonna put him over to Recovery. And that's going to go out of the game. Very important because 
I got to get them. I, I got to get, I got to get more guys out, frankly. Okay, I've got my max armies there. Okay, so I'm going to play this card. This could really turn out well for me. Major campaign against the Goths. Make two attack against the Goths. I must make both attacks. Treat each attack separately. I can use event cards and reserves on each attack. So one card is going to give me two attacks. He is demoralized. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't have any event cards to play. So I'm an eight on his six. 10 on his 11, so I'm going to discard two cards because I I got to get this guy defeated. So I push him back here. You understand what I did there? I discarded two cards to get plus one each. That ended getting me higher than him, and that's ultimately probably not the best thing that I could have done, but it's what I did. It is what I did. All right, so I'm actually I'm gonna demoral I'm gonna play Garantius. I'm gonna demoralize Constantine the Third and retreat him one space because he's getting too close for my comfort. It may be used if he has a temporary truce, if the fronts in mutiny or under the effects of Constantine attacks the Vandals, which it's not. If Purple Cloak is in effect, however, this convent cannot be used. Cur Cur Purple Cloak's already gone from the game, so I just retreated him and demoralized him. So I think what I'm going to do I'm actually going to try to get Olympias to come down. He's he's scaring me. So he comes down one. He was just getting close to cutting my head off. So we moved to round two. First card in round two. The Goths. Bullcrap. Second card. The Goths become emboldened and get activated. Well, that's a double whammy. That just kicked me right in the solar plexus. Um, then we do a surge. So he just gets emboldened. I swear, when I have a card like that that just undoes everything that I did, it just makes me want to pull my flipping hair out. The Goths advance. This one, the Goths retreat, and Olympias is going to move up. So I just undid everything I did last turn with my cards. Just typical. Three. And I know you guys have the same experience when you play. All right. So I'm going to do Imperial Wedding. So I can, I can choose one of the two things. I can retreat Olympias two spaces, not, not worried about it right now. I'm going to draw two Roman cards. And for the remainder of the game, I can carry over two, uh, two such cards. Now, the problem is I've got a, uh, uh, the Imperial Wedding token there, but I'll remember. I can carry over two cards. So I do get to draw two Roman cards because of that. Okay. So I have four cards. Is there any way in heaven I would have to defeat them three times? I just don't feel like I can do that. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to attack the Goths at least once. 8 on a 5. So he's a 10 and I'm a 12, so I do defeat him. Really was hoping he would get demoralized. I'm going to go ahead and attack him again. He's a seven on my eight. Okay, I beat him. This no demoralization. Do I want to do a temporary truce on Constantine? Or do I want to just go for it? All right, I'm going to carry these two cards over for next round. I'm just going to, I'm going to stand fast. So I'm going to pull up. Remember, I have Imperial Wedding, so I can carry two cards over. All right, add card to surge triggers a surge that cannot be avoided. All right, so Constantine's going to move on me. Thanks, jerk. 
I'm going to put that there. Sometimes you can stop uh, a surge by discarding a card. Remember, we talked about that. The Goths are going to activate. I don't care. Third card. All demoralized enemies retreat, and I don't think anybody's demoralized. Perfect. So I draw one card for this third and final round. Let's see what I can get possibly get done. Man, I just can't. All right, I'm going to demoralize Constantine and retreat him. That goes out of the game. Just because I... I guess I just, I try to attack here. So, two, four, six, eight on a seven. Got to outroll him, and I'm not going to. Because I rolled a freaking one. Oh, he rolled a one, too. So, he becomes demoralized. Olympias goes up, which is not good. And I end up beating him, because I'm a nine on his seven, so he moves back. So that ended up uh, working out. I'm gonna hold on to this card, it's too good to just waste. So I'm going to hold on to it. So that's gonna end this turn, let's go to the housekeeping phase. I do have this guy, I can't put any more than six armies there. I'm probably gonna go ahead and put this garrison out in Ravenna just in case. So let's move to the next turn. I can already tell you I'm not going to win this game, but it's still fun to play. All right, Barbarian cards. Unrest and Gallia. Add unrest or flip to revolt. It's already happened, so that doesn't affect me. Quiet in the West. Do not draw more enemy cards. I love when that one comes up. So, excellent. So I carried over one card. I'm going to draw five. All right, so I got to get those uh, Goths to surrender again. Very important. All right, so let's... That's a funny card. All right. So he is demoralized. I'm going to look at the Roman discard pile because I have a card that says pull out a discard... I'm going to pull out this one, make two attacks against the Goths. It's just too damn good. So I played that card to pull that out and put it into my hand. So then I'm going to play that card. Major campaign against the Goths. I get to attack them twice, and I can play events and other cards and use reserves. I got to try to, got to, try to knock them out of this game. So he's an eight on my eight. So I don't I think I'm going to hold on to it. All right. So I beat him. So I'm an 11 on his 10. So he gets knocked back. This is excellent. I think I'm going to knock him out for the second time. So I'm going to play this card. Plus four to the Roman attack value. I have to play it before calculating the total enemy attack value. So that's before I roll dice. So there I'm plus four. And then I'm going to do this card, which allows me to make an attack at plus two to the Roman attack value. So I'm literally plus six. I'm going to knock the Goths out of the game, hopefully. Eight to an 11. So he rolled a six, he's a 17. I'm an eight, plus a one is a nine, plus six is a 15. I would have to discard three cards. Well, I, I'm i gonna discard all three cards to, to beat him by one. I, it, it's just very important to get him out of the game. I, I can't win this game unless they're out and done. So at least they're out of the game again. Right? Okay, so we're gonna move to round two. So I feel like I have hope again. Constantine's gonna activate and that's gonna do a surge, bastard. Okay, so Constantine's gonna go again. 
and Samachus or Olympias is going to go up, which that's very, very bad. The Goths are going to activate, but they cannot overcome the eight power I have on their line, so it doesn't matter. Constantine's going to move into the siege box, and then I become executed. So that card was what killed me. The card that activated Olympias uh, two times that time. So my head rolls, I lose the game. So there you go. That is a look at Stilico, Last of the Romans. I, I love this game. Very hard. Going to be honest, this is even harder than Wars of Marcus Aurelius, which I thought that game was really, really hard. This one's extremely hard. What I would say about this one, though, is it's eminently doable if sometimes the cards come up in your favor early. Because if you can knock the Goths out of the game by, say, turn two or three, man, you can then just pummel Constantine. Once you get him by using the Goths, once you get him out of the game, it's it's like a cakewalk against the, the Vandals. So anyway, I lost the game. I uh, lost it in turn eight. So I, I think I did pretty well, but I, I felt like I was losing there starting around turn five. I just, once the Goths got back into the battle, that was kind of what spelled uh, my doom. So there you go. There's a look at Stilico. Great game. Really enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. I'm going to do a review video as well. Share my thoughts on the game, what I like, uh, and let you know. So thanks for watching. Hope I didn't make too many mistakes. I'm I'm sure I did. Now I'm sitting here thinking about it. I'm, I'm wondering if this mutiny being over from round to round wasn't supposed to carry over, but might have made a mistake. Doesn't really matter. You get the gist. Uh, play.